Welcome back and let's start with that Sabanya Stillwater court case back in 2021. <coughs> they announced plans to buy a Brazilian nickel mine for a billion dollars. Then a geological event or something happened and they backed out of the deal and the seller sued. Well, in a British court this week, the sellers won. In November will be a new court case to decide damages. Interestingly, they actually had offers from other parties to, to buy what, what Sabanya wasn't. But they obviously are after the court victory. Oh, yeah, absolutely, because if they don't have to sacrifice the asset, but they can get a penalty out of it, then that's, win -win. that's money in their pocket for, for free. So um, it's, it's quite interesting. I've been looking or trying to scratch around in terms of what the possible break fee is so that we can get an idea of mm. how big it can be. But the only, the only number that keeps getting put forward is that Sabanya might be liable for up to the purchase the price. purchase price. That is, is a insane. lot. With not, and they won't get the mine. They won't get the mine. $1.2 billion in the context of 800 million EBITDA last year, in the context of negative free cash flow, it can't happen at a worse time for Sabanya. This no, is why I think that's the max, from. though. Usually it's around 40%. I don't know, 40, 40 to 50%. It can't, it can't be, surely, the full purchase price. I mean, uh, so I don't know if European... Um, you know, regulators, you know, have sense in their heads, but I do believe they do. Yeah. I mean, but surely, because the point is, is, that, is that the seller has the asset. So let's say they get a fine. Let's say it's 200 million. That's kind of like to it's appease you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get the whole billion the whole, change. And then you they, still have the asset. And yeah. you had buyers who were prepared to pay more than Sabanya had offered. Yeah, I, I hope it's not too big. I hope they also take into account that Sabanya is in a really bad spot. I don't think the they care about that. <laughs> you know, you know, I law doesn't care about you where you are. To do. No, it doesn't. Unless if you threaten to, 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 to file for bankruptcy, yeah. then it's different. But that's the thing. Um, I are think they going to file for back bankruptcy? I don't necessarily think they're going to file for bankruptcy because I think that they still have a lot they of investors backing them. They should they, 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 it could mean an equity raise and that's not what we want right now. Not at this price, not so sad. usually I'm a buyer of Sabanya under 20 Rand as a rule. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I'm just staying out of it. You've never bought Sabanya in your life, What is you? that? <laughs> it's a lack of trading stock. <laughs> that is a lack of trading. Yeah. Sassel's become a fun trading stock too it recently, does. I know. Listed property remains a mixed bag, or rather office remains a horror. But Equitas Property Fund focuses on the sexy part, namely logistics. And six months' results weren't bad. He has CEO on occup occupancies. We've had some sort of little bit of vacancy here and there, but that's really been sort of in the two months while a tenant moves out, we, we give the unit a, a, a lick of paint and, and fix up what needs to be fixed up before the new tenant moves in kind of thing, you know? Mm. So we have been extremely fortunate from that point of view. But I mean, I suppose part of it is it really speaks to the caliber of real estate that we own, mm. that, that as it comes available, it does get snapped up fairly quickly in the marketplace. So we are mm. very, very, very proud of the team. It is, I mean, logistics, which we used to call industrial back in the day, and now it's got a more <coughs> fancy name, really is the, the sweet spot in, 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 in listed property. Notwithstanding, office is improving off a very low base. You're still saying logistics, bro. It's distribution centers, DCs. Uh, my <laughs> bad, my bad. DCs. Okay, we're going back to DCs. The ShopRite invented that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, and I, I think that the, the, that area is so... Um, popular and, so, and does so well because it is so vital to the health of a company that requires high-tech distribution um, in, in really, really good areas. And Equitas does offer that. And what I'd really like about what they do is they go into partnership with some of these guys that they're actually building the distribution yeah. centers for. So it is, it's almost retrofitted specifically to the tenant. The leases are exceptionally long. Their, their new ShopRite lease is 20 years long yeah, no. um, <laughs> with market-related um, escalations. So, I, yeah, I really like that. It's usually triple net leases as well, so they don't pay the maintenance. <laughs> um, it's, uh, they don't pay for, for utilities. So, yeah, I think that it's a, it's a good model. It's just unfortunate that they've lost a lot of money in the UK over the last few years. Yeah, offshore ventures going wrong. I mean, w out of all the, the property companies, I didn't think this one would join that that race to go, you know, we, we've known uh, these companies to go, especially property companies to go to the UK, go to um, Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe. That's their favorite. And they all don't do well every time they do that. So 
we thought maybe they'll, they'll, they'll take those lessons, you know, as Charlie Manga says, you know, learn from the demise of others, but clearly not. I liked the idea that they were going to the UK. I thought that they were going in with a... What's a, different, they were what's going different into now? A JV, they mm. were going mm. to build distribution centers there, which is exactly what they're doing very well in South Africa. But and now, and I thought Bukile was making a mistake with the Spain thing. Yeah. And look at, look at it now. I thought Amira was making the mistake with the US strip malls, and even that is doing well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's difficult to say how it's going to work out. It's Unfortunately, it didn't work out for Equitas. It was value destructive. And, but I do think that they're now in a better place to start delivering value to investors again. I just hope we don't get... Um, more kind of drip offers coming through, really well, decimating the distribution. So that was my right. very, very follow-up question. Are these drip offers just rights issues by stealth? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> and, and property guys love them. That's what they yeah. do all <coughs> the time. Mm. Okay. The Aframat trading update was a horror. HEPs expected down 75 to 85%, but surely we all saw that coming as they turned Lafarge SA into a profit center, and iron ore prices have been weak. And the market, I mean, at it, 75 to 85% HEPs drop, and the market's like, yeah, not <laughs> stressed. <laughs> I don't know. I don't follow them. <laughs> the market really trusts this management team yes. because it's not the first mm -hmm. time that they've made a big acquisition. Um, and every single time they've pivoted into something new and the market was um, worried about mm. that, they've delivered. And, and Lafarge is a much better fit for their business than the iron ore mines were. So th there's a lot of trust in management. I think that they do have some economic tailwinds behind them as well and some structural tailwinds in terms of growth in South Africa over the next few years. And I think that's what the market is rewarding. I'm still a little bit nervous. Um, I'm nervous about Transnet. I'm nervous about ArcelorMittal, which is a big client of theirs. For and the iron ore. Yeah. And I'm nervous about Lafarge being more difficult to turn around in that cement factory um, than what they anticipated. So I'm on the sidelines for now. I've taken profits on, on Afrimat, and, but I'm looking for another entry point. I just want to feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, no, if, but if you read the management uh, notes, basically a strong rand is bad for them. Oh, and obviously weak PGMs, like you're saying, iron ore. It's, I don't know, man. It's like I said, I don't, I don't really follow this one with interest, but it sounds like the perfect storm. It's but construction it, materials. It's, it's, Come on, the it's, government. It's, it's, it's hard, man. The government said, President, we're going to turn this country into a construction, construction site. site. Well, I have not seen that except Santin, which has been a construction site since I was here 15 years ago. So <laughs> this I don't is know. true. This is where I now live in Rosebank. I've got two cranes directly there outside you go. my window. But there that's you go. about all I see because I don't go to Santin. By the way, those offices, well, whatever they're building there, these offices used to be there. Uh, not quite. One stood, but I do remember. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And if they were, I would be. I could walk to work. It would be so much. There you go. Yeah. No fun in the PGM space right now. So Banya aside, everyone champions their chrome sales all of a sudden. Three Salagi managed well what they can. Platinum Palladium are refusing to come to the party. When, when suddenly it's all about chrome, you realise that PGMs are just not pretty. No. Is there hope for PGM? There's always hope for people. <laughs> so, so one so of bullying so, about PGMs. so there's a few things. Now, I'm, I still don't uh, have any PGMs. Like I'm, I'm still, I'm still nervous. I still don't think we're we're there yet. I would want to start seeing some positive momentum and pricing first. But um, the, in terms of the investment case for PGMs longer term, I see EV sales coming under pressure. I see. Um, co internal combustion engine sales coming under pressure, but I see hybrid sales continue to pick up in terms of vehicles. Platinum loadings are bigger in hybrids than they are in internal combustion yes. engines. Um, so I see that support coming through from there. And if eco economic growth support comes through as well, that will also be positive for PGMs. A lot of movement in hydrogen, um, mm -hmm. still a lot of investment in, in the hydrogen game longer term. So I think that that could potentially be something for them for the future. And then, PGMs are also used in sodium ion batteries, which are actually also starting to pick up in, in uh, popularity. So there's still something there. Just it's just not, not something price. now. Yeah, I, and even jewelry. We're seeing in China where, notwithstanding, they're buying lots of gold, or that's the central bank, the, the Chinese citizens mm. are switching to, to, to platinum as a, as a, as a jewelry metal pretty. because it's cheaper. But, Brad, I mean, you, you're all over EVs. You look at BYD, you look at Rivian, you look at Tesla and, 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 and others. And, I mean, Chantal makes a compelling argument, and it absolutely is there, but... I'm not going to answer this as a Tesla show. I'm going to answer this as a petrol head. You know, hybrids <laughs> make more sense 
than EVs, like full EVs. You still get your, your, your what do you call the... the, the, the uh, lower emissions. No, no, no. I see the lower emissions and stuff. The money that the government pays you. Oh, you still get oh, your, your subsidies. Your, your subsidies. You still get your incentives. You still get your subsidies. It's good. But no one really likes a fully electric car because it doesn't make that sound. It doesn't. So, <laughs> it, it, so a hybrid can, but does they can have a sound. But they can make the sound. When you got speakers. But they've, here's the they've, funny thing. They've tried with Aston Martin. We're still waiting. It's yeah. We are not convinced. But it's like the Formula One cars sound weird these days. <laughs> but here's the funny thing. So what they're doing now is they give you a battery and then they give you a, a petrol or diesel motor that then powers the battery. So not the drivetrain, the battery. Yeah, so yeah, Dodge I've is seen making one. They did a my car has a 40, 40 8 engine. volt of one of those yeah. motors. So I Dodge put know. a 3.6 litre engine to power the drivetrain, to power the battery. I'm like, the Americans are crazy. <laughs> uh, quickly before we go, PepsiCo results were weaker than expected. Guidance was lower again. Uh, so I keep an eye on the likes of Pepsi, uh, uh, McCormack Spices and all of those. FMCGs in general. Yeah, to try and get a sense of the economy. Should we be worried about this or? Again, it's still more a case of the incumbents, the smaller brands that claim to be much healthier for you. And no, I was going to say Celsius yeah, until you said healthier. Ex exactly, <laughs> and they are coming at a, at a, at a reasonable price. Because, I mean, if you are buying milk at, I don't know, 20 bucks, and there's a, a smaller guy that you can support, he's local, you know the people that work for him, and he's offering milk at 25 bucks, and they claim it's old milk or whatever milk, it's much <laughs> better than, you know, uh, it's vegan friendly. Autistic. Or or not, not, not autistic. <laughs> autistic. <laughs> no, man. Oh, my <laughs> word. We're getting cancelled today. I thought I get what you mean. Artisanal. Yes. Artisanal. Artisanal. Yes, there you go. And, you know, it, it, it sounds good. People like, you know, to, to, you know, I mean, it's if it's five rand, it makes sense. So I you'd want to support that. And there's a lot of that going in. Checkers, your yeah. favorite, is supporting those brands. Yes. Pick and Pay is supporting those smaller brands. So I don't know. It sounds good. It I'm looks good. I'm also thinking about the uh, Quaker Foods is where the weakness was. Nay, no, it's yeah. snacks. It's, it's snacks. snacks. What impact has these GPS. weight loss mm. weight loss drugs had on maybe there's that cravings too. Mm. on everything for snacks? Uh, Hinge and the dating apps. I mean, the, the, they were having a better time because people are thinner. I think these GPO whatever they are drugs. LG, but finally, last month Elon Musk and Twitter. Yes, I don't call it X got into trouble with the Brazilian judge. Musk threatened all sorts of fire and fury, but then they quietly agreed to the judge's demands, which included paying a fine. So they promptly paid the fine, but paid it into the wrong bank account. No news that they got the money back, but hey, who hasn't paid the wrong country before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Elon Musk sounds like someone who was um, hacked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Someone gave you the wrong. Victoria Boys High probably <laughs> does that Shame, to you. <laughs> but let's leave it there. Brad, uh, Chantal, thank you very much. Everyone have a great evening and an even grander weekend.